thankful. We're thankful to the Almighty God for just the awesome privilege of assembling ourselves together today. And when we sing that song, Mansion, Robe, and Crown, that's forward thinking. You know, a lot of times in motivational speaking, people talk about beginning with the end in mind. And as we assemble ourselves together today, we recognize and hope and pray that those that are here and those that may be joining us remotely, that we are thinking about the end. We are preparing for something yet to come. And so as we look to the word of God today, we, that is our lesson. That is the focus of our lesson this morning as well as this evening. And first and foremost to our visiting friends, uh, thank you for being with us. And thank you for the families. Over the uh, last uh, probably two weeks, been in touch with parents and grandparents of those who are in the South Florida area. Yesterday, I corresponded with a grandmother whose uh, grandson is at Florida Moore University, football player, and we're going to be hopefully be reaching out to him. And heard from a dad today uh, in relation to his daughter, and it's good to have have her with us today. You know who you are, you jazz. Good to have you with us from the great state of OHIO. If you don't know, then we'll talk after the sermon. Uh, <clears throat> but that's what's beautiful. Somebody helped you get here. Parents, grandparents, friends, neighbors. Somebody help you, mentors. And so today we want to talk for the first next few minutes and uh, about preparation. So again, welcome visitors. Uh, in whatever context you are here, you are here. And something you've heard me say many times, saints, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And that could not be, that's such an appropriate uh, statement as it relates to where we want to go today. In Matthew chapter 25, Matthew the 25th chapter, and the verse, my clicker ain't working up here, so I'm going to leave it right here for the engineers to, to fix that. You know, we, we got the thing with this clicker. Uh, I'm going to try one more time. Nope. So I'm going to go old school. Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse number one. Matthew the 25th chapter, and the verse is one, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. From these verses and perhaps a few others, we want to speak on the topic of preparation. Preparation. And as we look at the text, we recognize that, and I want I got to give you a little backdrop. Weddings in, ancient, in the ancient East, if you will, <clears throat> were primarily at night. The bridegroom would go to the bride's home and wait. And the, 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 the wedding parties, if you will, the ten virgins, if you will, would have their lamps and they would wait on the road. And so it's typically at night, hence the lamps. And the wedding party would come at the direction, if you will, of when the bridegroom and the wedding party would come, there would be this announcement, they had to be ready. So think about this contextually before we get into the, in Matthew 25, it'll make a whole lot of sense the way Jesus breaks this down. See, when Jesus gives a parable, it's a practical story, practical, something that the people could understand, but there was a deeper spiritual meaning. As many of us have grown up hearing about parables, what is a parable? An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So wedding parties at night, the procession, if you will, the bridegroom who would tarry, who would wait, and the virgins that would stand by the road had to have enough oil in their lamps because if your lamp burnt low, you had to go get some oil and you're going to miss the celebration. There's a spirit, there's a much deeper spiritual application here than just a wedding celebration. Being a part of the, you know, and I, I think about and when we took the kids up to Disney and whether it was New Year's or 4th of July, people start preparing early. While it's light outside, people are sitting on the, con some people are sleeping on concrete. Got the baby, taking turns holding the baby and people are waiting hours before 
the parade route for the closing celebration. So mankind has enough sense. Wherewithal, perspective, to prepare hours in advance for something they really want to see. How bad do we want heaven? How bad do we want heaven? You don't have to answer out loud. How bad do we want heaven? And are we prepared? Are we preparing? And so as we look at the text, Jesus makes it very clear biblically that there were some wise virgins and some foolish virgins. And so now when we think about the context if someone fell asleep or they didn't have sufficient oil, they would miss out. So a couple of points today. I want us to understand the difference between wise and foolish behavior because we got to be careful ourselves. We can act, we can live, act wisely, or we could act foolishly. Amen. I want us to be able to see that wise behavior biblically and also foolish behavior. But the most important thing today is I want us to identify the difference, but apply wisdom. Apply wisdom in our lives. So let's go to the text. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, then shall the kingdom of heaven be like the ten virgins who took their lambs, which took their lambs, went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Let's take a look at the foolish behavior. And Jesus, master teacher, we don't have to, you know, really look very far because he says they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So you have a lamp that burns oil. So whatever you have, they didn't take any, uh, adi any additional oil with them. So the foolishness is not, these weren't mean people. These weren't evil people. And saints, let us be mindful. Don't mistreat a non-Christian. Don't make them, don't, don't treat them like they're the worst thing ever. Because we, uh, we're a saint. We're sinners saved by the grace of God. So be mindful as we teach and teach and love and uh, let people know that God loves them. You got to teach them the truth. And you, you, you got you to make some hard stands, but treat people with a sense of humanity. Some of us act like, and again, it is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. But so is lying. Some of y'all are going to sit there and gonna go to Mount, Mount Rushmore. Oh, homosexuality is a sin. But, but you're a liar. Let me be clear. You know, lying is a sin. Homosexuality is a sin. Let me give you some clarity. Amen. We got big lies and little big lie, big sin, small sin, sin, sin. My point is this: the Bible says they were fooled. They did. They didn't prepare. They took no oil with them. Conversely, when you think about this foolish behavior, if you will, of these uh, these virgins, but Jesus contrasts it in verse four. And we're going to just exegete these first thirteen verses. The Bible says. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So you have two, con you have a compare and contrast, if you will. Five took no replenishments, had just had only what they had. You ever driven a car with just a spoonful of gas, as my mama would say? I told you all on Wednesday night in Bible study. I was going down to a meeting on, uh, near Key Biscayne and I made the attempt. I went to a Chevron in the hood. Nothing wrong with that. And he sweep. I said, you have any gas? No. I said, you don't have any gas? So he didn't have any gas. So he didn't prepare. And I said, OK. So I got on 95. Don't try this at home. And I drove to the I'm driving to the meeting in 95, as usual, came to a crashing halt. Then my fuel light came on fuel low. Then it got a little interesting. And y'all take my call if I run out of gas. I made it, but that was not a good feeling. Because there's things beyond my control. I made it, and the minute that meeting finished, thank God there was a gas station, another Chevron with gas, blocks away from my meeting place, Brother Darrell. I had to fuel up to, in order to have enough for the journey. And so the Bible says the foolish virgins didn't have an, didn't, didn't take any oil with them. Well, the wise 
took oil in their vessels with their lands. Now, here's, here comes opportunity, folks. God gives all of us opportunity. These foolish virgins, let me say it again, were not evil. They were not mean. We'll say this many times today. They were just unprepared. They were simply unprepared. Time, opportunity. Everybody has the opportunity to be ready when Jesus Christ comes back again. Because see, this bridegroom we're talking about, this parable, let me give you the top line, if you will. Wise, we have wise and foolish people. Amen. Everybody, all people have opportunity. The five virgins that were foolish and the five virgins that were wise, they all had opportunity. Let me let's hit the pause button. Brother, second, Tim, second uh, give me Titus chapter 2, verse 11. That'd make it easier. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. I don't think they heard me this morning, brothers. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Y'all all right? Titus chapter 2, verse 11. I want to make sure y'all hear me this morning. I got back at three o'clock this morning from Louisiana, so I'm on fumes today. Can't y'all tell? Titus chapter two and verse 11. See, everybody has opportunity. We talked last Sunday night, grace, mercy, and justice. You may want to write these down. See, grace is getting something we don't deserve. Grace, we got something we didn't, we didn't deserve to be Christians, to have a right to the tree of life. Mercy is not getting what we deserve, but justice has to be served. So justice is getting exactly what you deserve. Grace, we got it. We didn't deserve it. Mercy, have mercy on me. We, we're guilty, but we don't, we won't be punished. But justice has to be served. So if sin is found in you and me at the very end, justice has to be served because God is a just God. Yeah. Titus chapter two, verse 11, read. For the grace of God. Ah, uh, for the grace of God. Watch this. For the grace of God. That bringeth salvation. That bringeth salvation. Wait a minute. Who has the opportunity to be saved? Everybody, all people, black, white, rich, poor, regardless of race or ethnicity or political party, all the things that divide mankind, the Bible says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to some people. Hath appeared to hath all appeared men. Hath appeared to white people. All men. Black people. All. Rich people. All. Keep reading that Bible, all people. Y'all got it? For the grace of God to bring us salvation hath appeared to all. Read. All men. All men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. See, if you get something you don't deserve, teaching us that denying ungodliness. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. We should live soberly. We should pause. There's something called being grateful. If we receive grace, and we did, all mankind, we should be grateful. And so if you're, you know, you, when you, when someone gives you good service, I worked at Fritch's Big Boy in Toledo, Ohio, growing up when I was in high school. And I worked hard. I made sure every single person sat in my section. You didn't have that coffee gets halfway, sister Adele, but I wouldn't even go pop. Tea. Boom. But let me tell you something. I was working for a goal. See, there was a gratuity. You're going to be great. I want my service. I want to make sure that you understood my service was so good. And so and I would be shocked. And it rarely happened where I didn't get a tip. Because I made sure. The cooks didn't like me sometimes because I was like, check this out. They don't like that burger. It's coming back. You ain't working on tips. And I'll tell them right now, like, it's, it's fine. I said, no, 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 no. She said she wants that bun toasted. Toast it! Huh. That was a three, that double-decker burger, the big boy. That's what the, you know, it had three toasted buns. Some people were like, oh, I, I need that dark. I said, oh, here we go. No, give it back. Give it back. I said, fix it. Gail, yeah, oh, come on. Now. Fix it. I'm working with tips, brother. But when, I, when they left, they let me know how much they appreciated it. The service for the grace of God to bring in salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. See, if we're thankful, grateful, it we teaching us that we should live. Come on, we should live soberly, soberly, righteously, righteously and godly, and godly. In, Where? This present world. Where? in this present in world. In this present world. And so, but now look at this next word. Give me just the next word. Looking. Looking. See, there's an expectation. The way we live today, we should be looking, preparing, looking. Present participle, ongoing action. Looking what? For that blessed hope. For that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing. And the glorious appearing. Of the great God. Of the great God. And our Savior Jesus Christ. And our Christ. Savior Jesus Christ. Now keep that on the, on the top line. I want to make sure it's not just about oil and lamps and ten virgins. We're talking about preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen, if you understood that. 
This parable by Jesus is talking about, is, is giving you know, an example, Ten, five foolish, five wise, but they fail, five failed to prepare, you're gonna see in a minute. But it's ultimately about the second coming of Christ. Are we preparing ourselves? And it's gonna get to, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna come down your street in a minute because there's things that we do in terms of our oil. And that oil speaks to, if you want to break down every aspect of the parable, you know, our faith and our good works. The work we do to prepare for Christ coming back. Our work for that gratuity. The foolish virgins took no oil. They had they didn't prepare. While the bridegroom tarried, the Bible says, opportunity for everybody. While the bridegroom tarried, delayed by translation, they all slumbered and slept. It's human to sleep, right? Some of y'all may be doing it right now. It's wrong time, but it's still human. <laughs> they all, so all 10 of them slumbered and slept. So now most of the weddings in the ancient East were at night. Now, this does not mean Jesus Christ will come back at midnight. Heard brothers allude to that. Because the Bible says we don't know the day or the hour. So why would it be at midnight? And he put it in writing. And at midnight, watch this now, trying to use a clicker again. I'm going to leave it there for the engineers to be reminded. I love them. And at midnight, Matthew 25, verse 6, there was a cry made. The alert, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So now what's the expectation? Ten virgins waiting at night. Your lamps need to be burning because here comes the wedding party. Here comes the bridegroom. Everyone is excited. Everyone's expecting. The time has come. And you want that light to burn brightly, you got to trim that, you got to trim that lamp. And the Bible says then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. That lets me know. If you can trim your lamp and that flame's gonna get a little higher and the light shines brighter, because the time has come. The bridegroom cometh. And the Bible says, in verse 8, and the foolish said unto the wise, listen, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. We're going to stay here for a minute. When we think about the word of God, brothers and sisters, commitment and obedience is non-transferable. Commitment and obedience is non-transferable. If just give me Second Peter chapter one verse ten. Second Peter chapter one verse ten. I want to make sure you understand this. The time has come. Time was opportunity was given to prepare. We sing the song, I don't know, some of y'all know, don't let your light burn low. And now, like that spoonful of gas I had, and I got the alert, fuel low, that's indication I need to fill up. The foolish virgins, what made them foolish? They failed to prepare. Not bad people, not mean people, not evil people, unprepared. And so they're, Strategy is look to the wise and say, give, give us some oil. G give us, the foolish said unto the wise, verse 8, give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10, let's cross-reference. Second Peter 1, in the verses 10, read. Wherefore the rather. Wherefore the rather. Brethren. Brethren. Give diligence. Give, di wait a minute, wait, wait. You and Gail, y'all know y'all got to go. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence. Wait a minute. Give diligence. Give diligence. What does it mean to do something diligently? See, some people haphazardly look for jobs, haphazardly do their schoolwork. Diligence means you are, you are earnestly, sincerely working hard. What does the Bible say about diligence? You stay there. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them. He is a rewarder of them that ever diligently seek him. Brother and sisters, some of us got 
are on fumes. Some of us can't see the warning light in our quote unquote cars. I'm talking spiritually now, which has fuel low. There are too many children of God right now who are spiritually fuel low. You're driving on fumes. Some have already left the faith. The Bible is plain. In the last days, some shall depart from the faith. Not a faith. I got it. The faith. And there's warning signs. The way we talk, there's behavioral patterns. The way we talk, the way we act, what we're focused on. This is what this parable of Jesus is talking about. Small little thing, I'm out. Or majoring in the minors as the scribes and Pharisees did in Jesus' time. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence, read. To make your calling. To make your, watch these pronouns. Because see, before we go to that pronoun, come on, put it in my hand like track. Thank you. I ran track in Ohio. I know the state. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps because the bridegroom's coming. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us unprepared of your prepared. Y'all got it? For our lamps are gone out. So how embarrassing you had time and opportunity. The bridegroom cometh, here comes a wedding party, and you're sitting there with the lamp that's going out. Disrespectful, irreverent, and you will not, and you would miss the festivities. You don't go in. Getting ahead of myself. You don't go in. But you had opportunity. Give us of your oil. Can you transfer some of that that you have? Brothers and sisters, you have to, we have to make our call. Well, for the rather, brother, give diligence. Lenny said, okay, now you're going to make me wait here for the rest of the day. To read the rest of this verse. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Where for the rather, bro rather, brother, give diligence. Come on. To make your calling. Here it is. To make your calling and election short. Brothers and sisters, we got to work out our own. Read. For if ye do these things. For if you do these things. Ye shall never fail. We got to make our calling election true. We got to work on our own soul salvation, brothers and sisters. I thank God for a grandmama in Ohio that made us sit down, gave us a Brox Mint, and gave us a quarter. And we sat there like doo -doo -doo -doo, all in a row, like little red, like little California raisins, but we sat there. Do y'all need any gimmicks? You need discipline in your homes. That's some load. I'm, I'm coming down your street now. We need some more discipline in the homes. Be begging your kid to sit down. We sat there, and I tell you what, don't let her look around. We're sitting there. You know, we laugh. I don't know why everybody in Ohio, we like, we look. But now we're grown men today, elders in the Lord's church, gospel preachers. Amen. There's no, there's no magic to it. There's no trick. Train, train up your child in the way you should go when they're old. You will not depart from the Proverbs 20, 26. I told you all, my greatest accomplishment is not any of the leadership awards and this business stuff that I do. No, no, far from that. Is having four beautiful children, all of whom are members of the Lord's church. And I pray to God that the children, that Chantel and I, have the beauty of calling our own, that they find a child of God and they continue that legacy. Amen. That is my greatest accomplishment. So, brothers and sisters, what I'm saying to you is what's beginning to happen is our oil is getting low. COVID. Let's be honest, scared some people, eh, man? I ain't scared of nothing. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, okay. We had to take precautions. We didn't know. But now post-COVID, we got members of the Lord's church that we have not seen. Listen now. Some people have a post-COVID routine. People that have, were raised coming to worship. Raised! And now are going to be ready to fight you and justify being in front of a camera. And the eldership has had to tell more and more saints of God, I'm coming down your street, folks. I have to. Because I don't want your lamp to burn low. People got a Sunday morning routine now. Well, get up and go to work. Well, get up and go to school. But on Sunday morning, because I see you on Zoom, some of y'all laying in the bed. Turn off your video. It's embarrassing and irreverent. 
The Sunday morning routine is I don't get up and come to church. First of all, you don't come to church. We are the church. Don't let your light burn low. That's a, that's a warning light. I want y'all to listen for it. That's a warning light. You get up and put on a uniform. You're at school. You're at work. On a Monday or through the week and Sunday, I'm with y'all on Zoom. No, you ain't with us. You're not here. But those that are in the hospital, I'm not, and I'm not talking about those who are tra maybe traveling. Because when I have to travel sometimes, I can't find a faithful congregation. I went up to the Boston area. I'm thinking, I couldn't find a, church, a faithful Lord, Church of Christ. Going there, there's women leading songs, everything else. And it's different. Because there's something called a Wi-Fi delay. So Linda was on verse two, and I'm on verse one. He's saying, sing, this, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. And I'm like, wondrous love. It's different. Y'all know what I'm talking about. One aspect. Second aspect in terms of our light burning low. Just getting involved in a, in a ministry. I got to make this practical, brothers and sisters. This is not just about five foolish virgins. Get to know people. Our yams are doing an excellent job. Our singles are doing an excellent job. Don't just come to the building to worship. Because some of y'all are here. It's like, see? They ain't talking about me, but now I'm about to. You may be here physically, but are you here? Something called mindfulness. Are you present? Are you sitting there worried about other things? Worship God. My job today is to, to help us all. I'm talking to myself too. Don't let your light burn low. Physically present, thank you. But stay active, stay mindful. And when it's worship is over, when you sprint to your car, have you gotten to know anybody? We have to, we need each other. And I mean no harm. Sincerely. But we have folks running, living on film, running on film. Some are suffering in silence. You don't want anybody to ever know your business. But think about that. I don't want anybody to ever know my business. Then you die. Nobody ever knew your business. No one ever knew what you needed help with. And God gave you opportunity, lamp, oil, to say, Brother Daryl, man, I'm struggling, man. Brother, I'm struggling. I can't, can we pray together? Don't let your light burn low. Amen. Amen. I hope it's received in love because I'm doing my best to deliver it in love. But I tell you what, we have to be mindful. We create that, those cameras, all that stuff we purchased during COVID was when we were apart and we were concerned about being together. Love this audience. Love hearing the songs of the Zion. But brothers and sisters, we got it. Some got to pivot out. I'm going to look. I'm ready at that camera. Pivot. If you are able, pivot out of that. You tell your boss, you got to show up at a at said workplace or at said time. You tell your boss, no, nah, I ain't feeling today. I'm just going to be here in the bed. I'm going to call out. I'll see you in a minute. You're probably going to lose your job that same day. I got to give you one more. Last one, punctuality. Punctuality. Let me just give you some examples. I'm going to see if I can come on everybody. Free. We had uh I said, I think Beyonce is going on tour. Is that right? Y'all funny. Y'all funny. We have some funny people. <laughs> funny. People, I got one nod over here and one nod over there. Everybody else, I don't know who that is. Yes, you do. Playlist in your car right now. That's y'all funny. You got to be human. My point is this. Let's say there is a an event. It could be a movie. It could be a concert. It could be something, an award show, anything. And you got tickets, prime seats, and you show up halfway through. Some people couldn't even keep it like, mm -mm, I wouldn't do that. What you value, you got some Disney tickets, let's say. You take the family up. You're preparing your trip. You got your car fueled up. You're preparing weeks in advance, and you are there. You don't show up at Disney an hour before they close. But yet, there are some looking at the clock. We have a pattern. The majority of folks may come in after communion or during communion. Brothers and sisters, I, I want this to be practical. If I, don't, if I don't say it now about punctuality, Wednesday night starts 7 o'clock at 10 o'clock. I'm in this pulpit at 9.59 before worship starts. We have to be more punctual. Yeah. Amen, saints. We got to own it. We got to own it. Being on time. Is, is a mindset. 
when you when we get in the habit of just being, we get in the habit of leaving the house. Let's say you live 15 minutes away and you leave uh, 10 minutes before. You're going to be five minutes late every single Sunday. And so my point to the congregation and to this flock is let's do better. Because these are patterns that this burn. don't let your light burn low. So whether it's punctuality, whether it's encouraging someone, we have those that are suffering in silence. We may have those suffering in clicks. No, let, let it be known. Let leadership know what your struggles are. And we'll do our level best to help you wherever you are. And so as we think about the Bible, uh, what the Bible says in verse 8, let's take it home. What the Bible says, the foolish ones are like, we need some help. They failed to prepare. But the wise answered, here it is, the non-transferability, the non-transferability of obedience and commitment. Mama can't do it for you. Daddy can't do it for you. You have to work out. We have to work out our own soul salvation. The Bible says, but the wise answered. Here it is saying, not so. They're sitting there. The bridegroom's coming. You see, they're trying to get some of my oil out of my lamp. Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Work out your own soul salvation. There's a point in life. Because my kids certainly do it. We raise our children. Then our children grow up and they encourage us. I'd be lying before God if I didn't say my children encouraged me to be a better Christian. Amen. And there's a time they couldn't do anything by themselves. Rick and I taught our daddy the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were grown men. He was in the military. I was coming out of Ohio, University of Toledo. And we taught our daddy the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's my point? My point is this. You know, at one point, somebody took care of you, but then we grew up. So there are children of God who need to, uh, the children, literally, who may be that encouragement for your parents, to bring them to Christ and keep them faithful, to encourage them to be faithful. You can't keep them. Encourage them to be faithful. And so when the Bible says, the wise said, no, you got to do it. You got to take care of yourself. Because if we give you our oil, then we won't have enough. Let me just ask you all this. Uh, don't, you don't have to answer out loud. You just say amen. I wonder if you know somebody in your family that are just maybe draining your oil. You can't do it for them. Be an example. Pray for them. It may be somebody not in your family. Maybe it's just another member of the Lord's church. It's like, what happened? What's, where's, what, you've, lo you've lost your first love. What happened? So saints, parables like this are simplistic theologically, but they deal with the, the ultimate prize, eternal life. And so as we think about the word of God today, the wise said, I cannot give you what I have because I need to take care of me. <clears throat> so you go and get you some oil. And so now here's one of our final points, maybe second to our last point. We all have opportunity. In verse number nine, thank you, engineers. In verse number nine, or 10 rather, and while they went to buy. So the foolish virgins took the advice but we don't know when the door is going to close. So take advantage of every opportunity we have. The Bible says, and while they went to buy, did they listen? Yes. They were told the bridegroom is on his way. They record, they trim their light lamps. The lights are burning. Oh no, we don't have enough. The wise their lamps are shining brightly. So they went to get some oil. Give them credit. But brothers and sisters, our best intentions, some people intend to be saved. I'll wait for a more convenient time. Good intentions. I meant to forgive her. I was going to call her and apologize. I was going to tell that brother that I'm sorry. And while they went to buy, talking about the five foolish, y'all all right? The bridegroom came and they that were underlined in my Bible, highlighted in many of my Bibles, and they that were what? Ready. Went in with him to the marriage. Here it is. And the door was shut. Those that were ready went in. What does it mean to be ready? It means to prepare. It means that don't let our lamp burn low. And that lamp, our faith, our good works. I look back at sermons I wrote when I was a young man. 
I'm like, my goodness, in my 20s. I got a file folder, all catalog. catalog. And I said, I want to, I said, one day, I'm going to hand these sermons off. I'll give them to anybody now. Young men want to preach? Hey, take this folder. That somebody did that for me. So, brothers and sisters, we have an opportunity. I want you to think about your lamp. Don't think about anybody else's. Because we do that, too. Didn't Jesus have to teach on that? Because it's human nature. Well, her, look at her. her I, I got a little more oil, oil than her. We do that. It's human nature. I want you to think about, just take a second or two. I'm going to let it simmer. Think about your lamp and how much oil you have in it. Maybe you've gone through some things and it just, it, 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 it hits you hard and it took some of that oil. I'm begging you today. Don't let your light burn low. Because when they went out to replenish, the bridegroom came and those that were ready went in with him and the door was shut. And the sad commentary is there are those that today, certainly those outside the church don't have the oil because the devils also believe in tremble. We have to obey the gospel to get in. That's the prerequisite. But the Bible says afterward came also the other virgins. Now, what do they have now with them? Oil. Let, let us in. Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily or truly, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither. Now, this is Jesus bringing it to a close. Watch therefore. When you see therefore, know what it's there for. So the conclusion Jesus reaches. For all of us to know and to apply is because of this parable, this story, we need to watch. You, me, watch, therefore, for we, you do not know the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. Jesus is coming back again. Titus 2, verse 11, that Gail read. For the grace of God to bring us salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us a denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking. Titus 2 and 12, looking. So now as we look, let's make sure our light, our lamps don't burn low. As we look, let's be punctual. As we look, let's encourage one another. As we look, let's forgive one another. As we look, apologize if you've done wrong. As we look. For the bridegroom, let us be mindful of the fact. Don't go to bed mad. Amen. Anybody go to bed mad last night? The giggle means yes, you did. Because you may not wake up. Get it right. Get it right. Because you don't know. We don't know when he's coming back again. And the parable of the virgins. The virgins represent wise and foolish people. The oil, their faith, and their works. The bridegroom represents Jesus Christ, who's coming back again. We don't know the day nor the hour. Will he find you laying in bed on zone? I mean no harm. I don't mean that for any, uh, any comedic. Like, no, no, no. Will he find me in an unforgiving state? I'm going to put it in my context. Will he find me not being mad at Steve Hogan and not forgiving him? When the bridegroom comes, will he find me seeking to justify my pattern, my lifestyle? Brothers and sisters, all I'm saying to you is be ready, because when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So do all you can while you can. Don't make excuses or justification. Just use your time wisely. Wisely. Apply wisdom. Because at the end of the day, for those that are outside the body of Christ, God has given you an opportunity. To be saved. God has given us the opportunity to become a child of God. If you're here today, it is my fervent prayer that you will recognize that Jesus Christ came down from heaven. That agape, in spite of you, unconditional love. <clears throat> John chapter 3 and verse 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
for God sent not his son, verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You have the should in 2 Peter. You got the might, or Titus 2, 11, should. We should live soberly, godly, and righteously in this present world. And that the world through him might be saved. Because we have a choice. God has given us all free moral agency. What is your choice today? And I beg of you, if there's something on your heart that's standing in the way of you growing and replenishing that oil, get it right today. Go to that brother, go to that sister and say, you know what? I've been holding something for too long and I don't want to go to hell. And I don't want you to go to hell. Amen, Say, <clears throat> It may hurt. But say, I just need to let something go. I need to let it go. Whatever that is. Or maybe you just need to simply apologize to somebody that you've been holding on to that apology because pride got in the way. Maybe it's calling a parent or a loved one just saying, I love you. There are children, you know, I've worked in youth development for a long time. There's children that just hate their parents. They don't really hate their parents. They hate what they've gone through. They hate the fact their daddy's not there. I know what that was like. I cried every Father's Day, every Kodak commercial in Ohio because my daddy wasn't there. That's why I'm super daddy now. Facts. And so my point is this. God has given you and me opportunity today. Do something that puts them all on your lamp today. Commit to God. Don't worry about me. Don't commit to me. Commit to God. Replenish your oil today. Because we don't know. He may come back tonight. Because we don't know the day nor the hour. So Jesus says, do what? Watch. That watch means not to just literally look with your eyes, but to understand that a time is coming and we need to be ready. If you are here and you're not a child of God, you certainly can be. You got to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And how do you do that? You must hear and believe what Jesus Christ has done for your sins. He came, hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary. <clears throat> and when he died, he shed his blood. John 19, 31 and following. Soldiers saw that he, the one was, the, they broke the leg of the first, broke the leg of the second. They came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already. They break not his legs. Not a bone was broken, but a soldier with a spear pierced his side. And the Bible says, forthwith came there out blood <clears throat> and water. So once you've heard what he's done, he died on the cross. He shed his blood. He was buried. <clears throat> and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Do you believe that he did that for you? If you do, are you willing to change your life? Change your mind. Repentance. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Are you willing to confess, <clears throat> as the Collins family did last week? Husband couldn't save wife. Wife couldn't save husband. But husband and wife obeyed God. And it's good to see y'all with us. Today. They confessed Christ to be the son of God individually. And they went down individually in that water. Mama can't go down for the whole family. Daddy can't go down for the whole family. They were saved last week. Rise up to walk in a brand new way of life. Be faithful unto death. And being faithful means don't let. Your light burn low. Because see, one day every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. <clears throat> and speaking of prayers, two weeks straight, y'all get out of here. I got to put by 11.25. So some of y'all been praying real hard. It's working. If you're here today, I pray to God. If something is standing in the way, if you need to ask for prayer, ask for. If you want to be baptized, if you're outside the body of the Church of Christ, today is a day of salvation. A song has been selected. But one day every tongue will confess, every knee shall bow. But that will be too late. Now is the time to submit, surrender to Jesus Christ. As we together stand, as we together sing. Those on Zoom, put your request in the chat. Won't you come? <clears throat>